Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. AMD has cut Ryzen 7000 CPU pricing for the holiday sales period. So I thought it would be a good idea to go through and discuss these changes and crucially provide an update to our cost per frame graphs factoring in all the latest CPU prices. AMD has never been afraid of discounting their CPUs when they require it, but it's a bit surprising to see price cuts so soon and to such a significant degree. In our reviews and many others, the high pricing of Zen 4 was criticized compared to Intel's 13th gen lineup, but even so, Zen 4 is a relatively new platform, so perhaps I wasn't expecting to see large price movement until early next year. But in good news for shoppers, AMD has decided to lower pricing for the Black Friday week of sales, so let's take a look in a moment after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI and their new Meg Prospect 700K series. And having recently built two systems in the Prospect 700, we were blown away by the build quality design, neat cable management was a breeze, and really the entire build process felt effortless, and there is plenty of room for beefy next generation graphics cards. For use as a test system, I really appreciate the robust magnetic hinge door panels, which clip into place and don't swing open when moving the case. There's also loads of room for expansion, full EATX motherboard compatibility, 360mm radiator support, and with loads of room for custom cooling, you can take things up a notch thanks to a collaboration between MSI and EKWB to deliver a bespoke distro plate for the Prospect 700. So to learn more, please check the links in the video description. The Ryzen 9 7950X has dropped in price from $700 US to just $575, which is a pretty significant $125 price cut. This makes AMD's flagship Zen 4 part 18% cheaper, and crucially brings it below the price of Intel's Core i9 13900K at $620, and matches the price of the Core i9 13900KF. The Ryzen 9 7900X drops from $550 US to $475, representing a 14% discount and a $75 reduction in total. This keeps AMD's 12-core model in between the Core i7 13700K and Core i9 13900K, but pushes pricing closer to the Core i7 model, which currently retails for $440. The Ryzen 7 7700X has received a $50 price cut, dropping it from $400 to $350 US, a 13% discount. While the percentage discount is slightly lower than the other models, this is a decent shakeup for AMD's Ryzen 7 positioning. Previously, it was priced at a similar level to the Core i7 13700KF, but it now sits just $30 above the Core i5 13600K. Then we have the Ryzen 5 7600X, which also receives a $50 price cut dropping the cheapest Zen 4 part from $300 to $250 US, a 17% discount. Again, this gives the 7600X some breathing room compared to Raptor Lake. At the old price, it was neck and neck with the Core i5 13600KF, but now it sits comfortably cheaper. While many of these Intel CPUs we've been talking about have seen small price adjustments since launch, currently they are priced much closer to their original MSRP than AMD's products. While it's nice to get these sorts of discounts, AMD did confirm to us that this is a limited time promotion for the holiday season. We didn't get a confirmation on when these prices would revert back to pre-discount levels, but they are temporary. These are not official price cuts for the long term. Maybe they should be, and we'll explore that shortly, but yeah, not official price cuts. Though it is nice to see broad discounts not just for the US, but also other regions including Europe. So it could be a good time to jump into that CPU or full platform upgrade if you were considering it. The big question after these price adjustments is whether AMD's Zen 4 lineup is now in the leading position in terms of value, especially for gamers. In a lot of our previous coverage, it was hard to make an outright case for Zen 4. In the best scenarios, AMD's parts were neck and neck with Intel 13th gen in gaming performance and value, meaning you had to consider other factors as to which CPU was the better choice, such as productivity performance or platform longevity. In the worst scenarios for Zen 4, 13th gen had an outright lead. So let's now take a look at some updated cost per frame graphs, and I should note here that we've updated pricing for every CPU in the charts, not just Zen 4 parts, as many prices have shifted since we last showed this data in our 13th gen reviews. As for the 1% low performance data, these are the same figures we showed in our Raptor Lake content using a 12-game 1080p average using the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090. 
When looking strictly at CPU pricing only using DDR5 data where available, the Ryzen 7 7600X moves up the charts to take a more significant lead on similarly priced processors in the $200 to $250 range. Previously, the Ryzen 5 5600X was clearly superior value, but now the 7600X is 5% cheaper per frame. This extends AMD's lead compared to Intel parts. The 7600X is now 14% cheaper per frame compared to the 12600K and 22% cheaper compared to the 13600K. While these figures will shrink somewhat when using KF models instead of the full K SKUs we tested, the new $250 price point for the 7600X is much more suitable in the current market. The only parts in our chart that are clearly superior value are the Core i5-12400F and Ryzen 5 5600, both of which offer excellent mainstream value for more budget-oriented shoppers. The Ryzen 7 7700X is also now in a more attractive position, especially if you're interested in one of the fastest overall CPUs you can get. While not the overall best, that still goes to the Core i9-13900K, which is an especially good value, the 7700X now offers a 20% discount per frame relative to the Core i7-13700K when looking at CPU prices only. This was a neck and neck battle last time we checked, but these days it's much closer to the value of the Core i5-13600K while still being unable to quite get to that level. As for Ryzen 9 and Core i9 parts, even with pricing adjustments, you just wouldn't consider these models for gaming unless you were also building a system for heavy productivity use. These high-end parts are around the ballpark of Core i7 and Ryzen 7 parts in gaming performance, but with much higher price tags, they just aren't delivering good gaming value. Yes, the 7950X is now more competitive with the 13900K's value, but in both situations, the value pick would be a lower tier model. But that discussion is just looking at CPU pricing. For the majority of people interested in buying these parts, you'll have to do a full platform upgrade, which is where platform costs come into play. This significantly complicates the discussion because now we have two configurations for each Intel processor as they support both DDR4 and DDR5 memory. In this first chart that we're looking at, this is a straight copy of the data we used from our 13th gen reviews, but with adjusted pricing for each component. So what this means is in the first column we have our memory speeds, DDR5 6000 CL30 for AM5, DDR4 3600 CL14 for AM4, and both DDR5 6400 CL32 and DDR4 3600 CL14 for LGA1700 CPUs. This is primarily what we tested with, it's up there with the fastest memory supported on each platform, which delivers the best performance. For more info on how we tested, check our CPU reviews. The next few columns of data reveal pricing. The first column is the CPU price. The second column is the price for a 32 gig kit of the listed memory spec. And the third column is motherboard pricing. For all CPUs here, we've gone with B-series board pricing. So B650 for AM5, B550 for AM4, and B660 for LGA1700. While we wouldn't necessarily recommend going for a B660 board when buying something like a 12900K, a significant percentage of our audience said they would consider buying a B-series board for an Intel K-series CPU. So that's what we've used as they are cheaper. The final column to the right is the total platform price for each configuration, which is then used for the cost per frame data. So with all of that in mind, looking at total platform cost using the highest performing memory configuration, the Ryzen 5 7600X is the best value gaming processor you can get, though it's pretty much neck and neck with the Ryzen 5 5600 configuration in cost per frame. The 5600 platform is much cheaper, but also much slower, so the value equation ends up pretty neutral. These two options come in roughly 4% cheaper per frame than the Core i5-12400F in a DDR4 configuration. Looking purely at current generation parts, this makes the 7600X 9% cheaper per frame relative to the Core i5-13600K in either its DDR4 or DDR5 configurations, both which offer similar value. Previously, this was very much a neck and neck battle between AMD and Intel when both used high performance memory, but AMD's new price discounts have put Zen 4 into the lead in this market. The Ryzen 7 7700X ends up in a very crowded position in this chart, offering $4.02 per frame. That's basically identical value to the Core i5-13600K, and ends up slightly better than the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D using premium DDR4. Dropping its price by $50 also puts it 9% ahead of the Core i7-13700K using DDR5 memory in total platform cost. Previously, the 13700K was the better value processor for gaming. 
Using total platform costs also makes it more clear how poor value the Ryzen 9 and Core i9 processors are for gamers, despite discounts making the Ryzen 9 Zen 4 processors a bit more attractive. The 13700K is at least 7% better value than the Ryzen 9 7900X, and the gap only grows from there when looking at the 12900K, 13900K, and 7950X. The 5950X is especially poor value for gamers these days. But using premium performance memory is only one part of the story, because all those DDR4 configurations are pretty unattractive when paired with the expensive DDR4 3600CL14 memory. In a previous video we did, we found that DDR4 3600CL16 offers much better value being roughly half the price of the premium low latency option while only reducing performance slightly. So let's adjust all the margins and numbers in this graph to account for the cheaper DDR4 configuration. In this chart, which I think shows probably the most realistic configurations buyers would be considering, the 7600X is no longer the best value option in terms of total platform cost. That would go to the Ryzen 5 5600, which is now substantially better value at a 19% lower cost per frame than the 7600X. It's still the case during this holiday period that if you were a budget shopper looking at building a brand new gaming PC, that the AM4 platform offers the best value. The Core i5-12400F is also a good choice. It is 6% more costly per frame than the 5600, but still delivers a decent value improvement over the latest Zen 4 and Raptor Lake models. Speaking of Raptor Lake, the battle between the 13600K and 7600X is closer once more, as with cheaper DDR4 memory, the 13600K's DDR4 configuration is now able to match the value of the 7600X. In fact, it's about 3% cheaper per frame. This is also what we found in our previous value analysis of several CPUs using different memory types. Raptor Lake, still supporting DDR4 memory, can put it into a good value position, as not only is 3600CL16 memory cheaper than a sensible DDR5 kit, but B660 DDR4 motherboards are also cheaper than DDR5 boards for either Intel or AMD parts. In this chart, the 5800X3D is also much more competitive with a sensible DDR4 configuration, though with pricing adjustments, it's no longer superior value compared to the 7600X in terms of total platform cost. The 5800X3D has gone up in price from $330 to $390 since we last looked at value, while the 7600X is of course now cheaper. This puts the 7600X slightly ahead in cost per frame among high performance CPUs. The Ryzen 7 7700X also now ends up similar value to the Core i7-13700K configuration using sensible DDR4 3600CL16. The 7700X is the better value part comparing DDR5 versus DDR5, but Raptor Lake could be a good choice if you're more thinking DDR4. In any case, pricing adjustments have made the 7700X now neck and neck with the 13th gen Core i7 part in the best cases and superior value when viewing other configurations. As for higher end models, again it doesn't make a ton of sense to consider Ryzen 9 or Core i9 parts for gaming even when factoring in more value friendly DDR4. The Core i9-13900K using DDR4 is still more costly per frame than the Core i7-13700K using DDR5-6400, while the 7950X is not good good value for gamers. When buying these higher end parts it makes a lot more sense to compare productivity performance which is the main reason you'd spend the extra money on a high core count processor. The discount for the 7950X does make it a decent choice for productivity builds, especially when compared to the Core i9-13900K using DDR5, as it offers similar performance at a lower price while also consuming less power and being easier to cool. I think that's enough to make the 7950X the obvious choice for a more productivity focused high end build. As for more mid-range parts, productivity value still isn't amazing on the AMD side. Comparing DDR5 versus DDR5, the 13600K platform is only 9% more expensive, but can deliver around 40% more productivity performance in core-heavy workloads than the 7600X. So while the 7600X is now a more attractive gaming CPU from a value standpoint, its price still isn't ideal for mixed gaming and productivity systems. 
you'll find similar comparing the 7700X to the Core i7-13700K, where a Raptor Lake DDR5 platform is 11% more expensive, but is often over 30% faster in productivity. These days, whenever we talk about value for current generation CPUs, it starts to become very complicated with all the various considerations around platform cost, gaming performance, and productivity. The latest AMD price reductions for the holiday period are certainly welcome and make Zen 4 more competitive, but it's only in certain configurations where they make sense to buy compared to Intel's Raptor Lake or older processors. When looking purely at gaming performance among current generation parts, the Ryzen 5 7600X and Ryzen 7 7700X edge into a more competitive position relative to the Core i5 13600K and Core i7 13700K. The Zen 4 models now have the lead in cost per frame comparing DDR5 versus DDR5 platform upgrades, while it's also now neck and neck for AM5 versus Intel plus DDR4. That's a solid position for AMD to be in, especially as these days we'd lean more towards recommending a DDR5 platform as it does deliver notable performance improvements and has the potential for better longevity. So if you were targeting gaming, you wanted top tier performance and you were interested in a full platform upgrade or were building a new system, you'd probably pick a part like the 7600X under the current pricing model. However, in this Ryzen 5 slash Ryzen 7 market, these holiday price cuts haven't done enough to close the value gap for productivity. It does typically make an Intel Raptor Lake platform more expensive, but parts like the 13600K are also substantially faster in popular applications. So you'll have to decide how much weight to place on productivity performance when looking at value. The more core heavy stuff you plan on doing, the more it makes sense to grab the 13600K even after Zen 4 discounts. As for value builds, it still doesn't make sense to consider Zen 4 at all, even with the Ryzen 5 7600X at $250. The Ryzen 5 5600 at just $135 is far too attractive, both of those on the AM4 platform already, or for those looking for a new system build. A 5600 platform with sweet spot DDR4 memory and a good B550 motherboard is over 40% cheaper than a 7600X on AM5 bundle, and while it's also a decent amount slower, it's hard to ignore the value it presents. The 5800X3D is also a standout high-end option if you're already on the AM4 platform and want to drop in upgrade, but now that the 7600X platform upgrade is better value than a 5800X3D platform upgrade, it doesn't make sense to build a new 5800X3D PC for gaming, especially as that's the end of the line for AM4. Then for high-end productivity, I think the 7950X is a standout choice thanks to its large discount. It was already the more efficient and easy to cool processor compared to the Core i9-13900K, and it's on a better platform, but now it's cheaper as well for similar productivity performance, so that's hard to go past as a package. I think it's also clear after analyzing these holiday promotional prices that they should be the permanent prices for AM5 CPUs going forward. The MSRPs for Ryzen 7000 just aren't that attractive compared to Intel's 13th gen. At best, they are equivalent in value, and at worst, Intel has a significant lead. If AMD wants to have at least a few categories where they are the standout choice, these prices need to remain. On top of that, there still isn't a good mainstream or entry-level part for AM5, so introducing new models at or below $200 would be welcome, and fingers crossed something like that happens at CES or early next year. Anyway, that's it for this brief analysis into AMD's reduced CPU prices for the holiday period. As we said, these are not permanent discounts. These are just promotional prices for the current holiday sales. Not quite sure how long they'll last. Hopefully they last well into December. That would be fantastic. But yeah, do expect prices to go back up soon. Uh, if you are interested in our independent testing and supporting it, then please do consider supporting us via our Patreon or Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You'll gain access to things like our Discord community, our monthly live streams, which one of those will be coming up very, very soon on the channel, BTS videos, all sorts of good stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.